Shalawam, Wathawada, Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rakat Kodash, for giving us the understanding of the Holy Bible through their men. Starting with the Apostles of Grey Millstone, who taught me the truth of the Bible through the Holy Spirit, who are worthy of double honours. And Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rakat Kodash, Brakatham, to the 144,000 servants of Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai, and the remaining elect of the nation of Israel. So I've got a pretty interesting article here <laughs> from Israel365news.com, which obviously is um, a so-called Jew-Israeli news publication, which is rather interesting in itself because, you know, you've got this, you know, Israeli news publication um focusing on war, World War Three, nuclear missiles, which is contrary to their so-called existence in our land, the land of Israel, right? This is where the controversy comes into play, so to speak. You know, the scriptures speak about the controversy of Zion. I believe you read about that in the book of Isaiah, chapter 34. It speaks about the controversy of Zion. And pretty much that's going into um, the time when the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, alongside his son, Yahweh Shai, with the angels, when they're going to settle this controversy between who the real Israelites are and who the Israelites aren't. Okay, because right now you have these Edomites, these so-called Jews in our land, professing to be the people of God, the people of the Lord. They're calling themselves Jews. They're calling themselves Israelis, so on and so forth. However, according to the prophecy, pursuant to the book of Isaiah, once again, Isaiah uh, chapter 2, it speaks about how when the real Israelites are in the land, when the real Israelites, which are our so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans are, in rulership forever there isn't going to be any nation that's going to learn of war anymore roughly paraphrasing so in other words when you know when we establish our kingdom there ain't going to be no headlines no articles or no rumors of war all right because there ain't going to be no war in that time it's going to be a time of peace okay and this is how we know the people that's in our land that are calling themselves Israelis, Jews, so on and so forth, that they're imposters, okay, pursuant to Revelation 2 verse 9, in which when you read that scripture in its proper context, we know, you know, those of us that have this understanding, we know that Yahweh Shai was referring to, um, you know, the wicked of our people back then, Judah, Benjamin and Levi, that were professing themselves to be upright, righteous Jews. However, they were being hypocrites. They were being wicked at the time. And when we bring it up to date, we can actually apply the scripture to the wicked, right? The wicked being Esau, Edom, the Edomites, especially these uh, Edomites that are in our land, professing themselves to be the Jews, Israelites, the people of God, okay? beginning with the wicked elite of course the Rothschild family that's why the Lord said I know the blasphemy of them that say they are Jews and are not bar of the synagogues of Satan Satan being the adversary our adversary being who Esau Edom going all the way back to the womb Genesis 25 the first came out red all over like in a hairy garment and as a matter of fact they're bastards according to the book of Zechariah, chapter 9, and verse 6. So this is a rather interesting um, article that they're bringing out. And as you can see, everyone <laughs> is pretty much prophesying, man. Everyone's claiming to be a prophet. Everyone's trying to break down the scriptures. Everyone's searching for the truth, you know, to get understanding of the time that we're living in. And this is all prophetic, man. As a matter of fact, uh, what did the Lord say when we go to... Amos, let's start there. 
Amos, I want to say that's Amos 3, and verse 8, it says, The lion have roared, who will not fear? The Lord, Yahweh, have spoken, who can but prophesy? And how does our Lord speak? By way of his servants, the prophets. Okay, we read about that in Hosea 12, verse 10. Luke chapter 1, verse 70. It tells us that Yahweh Bashmah Shai, the God of our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, speaks by the mouth of his servants, the prophets. And his servants, the prophets, are here in the flesh, in the reincarnation, if you can receive it, pursuant to First uh, Corinthians 14, and verse 32. You know, the prophets are back prophesying week in, week out, day in, day out. But through the Spirit, this is given the rest of the people out there in the world the understanding of what the Bible is really speaking about, especially as it pertains to prophecy. And this is why everyone right now <laughs> is pretty much trying to break down the scriptures in which the scripture that they're bringing out here, Zechariah 14 and verse 12, they've got it right because indeed that scripture is going into um, nuclear warfare, okay, nuclear destruction. So, you know, this is just another testament as to the time that we're living in because we're definitely living in that time, right, the end of the world. As a matter of fact, the Lord said through the mouth of Habakkuk, uh, when you go to Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 3, Yahweh, uh, Shem Yahweh said, the vision is yet for an appointed time. By the end, it shall speak. And the visions of our forefathers, the prophets, whether it be um, the vision that was given unto Zechariah or Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Nahum, Amos, even John the Revelator on the Isle of Patmos over 2,000 years ago, well, their vision that they saw concerning uh, nuclear warfare, World War Three, ICBMs, you know, these things are starting to become more and more clear. Hence, again, Habakkuk 2 verse 3, for the vision is yet for an appointed time, by the end it shall speak and not lie. Okay, so, you know, we're living in some very interesting times, man, you know. But anyway, let's get into the scripture. It says, as for those people that warred against Jerusalem, Hashem, <laughs> because that's how these Edomites, these so-called Jews, Amalek out there in the land of Israel, this is how they say the name of the Lord, in which Hashem is not the name of the Heavenly Father. Hashem, which is really pronounced Hashem, in the ancient Hebrew, simply means the name. But we know, according to the scriptures, the true name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, alongside his son Yahweh Shai, is dreadful unto these heathen, okay, beginning with Esau, Edom. So they ain't going to dare pronounce the true name of the Lord, which is Yahweh. Anyway, it says, Hashem will smite them with this plague. Their flesh shall rot away while they stand on their feet. Their eyes shall rot away in their sockets, and their tongues shall rot away in their mouths. Zechariah 14, verse 12, from the Israel Bible. So, yep, this is a very prophetic scripture, um, which is going into the time that we're approaching, World War Three, also known as the Third World, pursuant to Revelation 11, verse 14 which is going to result in the nuclear destruction of America, which is Babylon the Great, according to Revelation 17, all right? And America, Babylon the Great, is going to be destroyed at the hands of these Russians, man. Okay, at the hands of these Russians. And this is why we're seeing articles like this in the headline, okay? Because we're, we're approaching that time. We're getting closer and closer. However... Those of us that's in the know, all right, those of us that have the true understanding of these scriptures, we understand that Zechariah 14, verse 12, World War Three, will not commence until um, the prophecy, the vision of the mark of the beast, Revelation 13 and 16, has been fulfilled. 
okay, which the mark of the beast is going into the implantable microchip, in which that's the, the goals of the wicked elite of Esau, Edom. Their goal is to pretty much enslave control and be a god over the masses of people by way of a chip, which is that mark, okay? And once, you know, that is fulfilled, well, that's when what we're seeing here in this image, which is an image of a mushroom cloud, which Isaiah, the prophet, saw in his vision. Again, when you go to Isaiah 34, you know, you can uh, read that for yourself, but pretty much this is what Isaiah saw in his vision, okay? He saw nuclear explosions, mushroom clouds, ICBMs being pelted at America, Babylon the Great, man. Okay, so let's read what they're saying here. It says, for the third time this month, Russian President Vladimir Putin is threatening to deploy tactical nuclear weapons. Should this threat be realized, it would conform to several aspects of the Gog and Magog war as described by the prophets such as um you know when you go to the book of ezekiel 38 you read about gog and magog which gog magog you know this is going into um the russians because you have these edomites that call themselves russians today that are dwelling in uh the the land of japheth right the sons of Japheth, in which Magog was a son of Japheth that used to inhabit that land, that region of the world, Europe, okay, and especially um, Russia, modern day Russia, right? So these Edomites have stolen that land from, you know, the sons of Japheth, and now they're in that land calling themselves Russians. So now they represent Magog and Gog, all right? It says, earlier this month, before invading Ukraine, Putin responded to threats by Western countries to intervene should he decide to invade. Of course, the military potential of NATO and Russia are incomparable. We understand it, Putin said at a press conference. But we also understand that Russia is one of the leading nuclear states and by some modern components, it even outperforms many. Last week, Putin warned that whosoever tries to hinder us in Ukraine would see consequences you have never seen in your history, which of course, that brings the scriptures to mind like Ezekiel 38 and verse 10, where it speaks about how the Lord is going to put an evil thought into the mind of uh, the leader of, you know, Russia, Magog, Gog, so to speak. And that evil thought is going to come in the form of, you know, these Russians launching their nuclear missiles upon their enemies, primarily America, Babylon the Great, right? And that's exactly what's going to happen when World War Three actually heats up to a nuclear level. And it's going to take only one hour. It's going to take 60 minutes. The Apostle John saw that when you go to Revelation 18. So... It's going to be um, a very speedy riddance of America, you know, during that time. Now, I reason to say this threat took on ominous proportions on Sunday when he ordered the Russian defense minister and the chief of the military general staff to put the nuclear deterrent forces on a special regime of combat duty, in which, again, you know, ain't no nukes going to be shut off yet or launch yet, because, like I said, Revelation 13 and 16 needs to be um, uh, fulfilled. Revelation 3 verse 10 needs to be fulfilled. You know, everyone needs to be tested with that mark, okay, the hour of temptation. So we know what's happening right now between um, uh, Russia, Ukraine, the United States. As it pertains to... Um, full-on nuclear warfare well that's hype that's why our lord our Shai mentioned there being wars and rumors of wars when you go to the book of matthew 24 and verse 6 if i'm not mistaken however what we are seeing is um you know the foreshadow of world war three 
UK and we're also seeing the beginning stages of um, Ezekiel 38 concerning the Lord turning these Russians back into that uh, Soviet power, all right? Whereby the Russians want to regain um, certain regions that they had when they were the USSR, such as um, Ukraine, Belarus and whatnot. So that's what's really happening right now in the news. So, you know, I just want to bring this out for edification purposes. I found it interesting how, you know, you have this Israeli uh, news publication bringing out Zechariah 14 verse 12, you know, catching himself, breaking it down or tying it to the nuclear war. And they're obviously doing that because the word has gone out, okay? The word has gone out, man. As a matter of fact, let's get that in um, Matthew 24, uh, verse 14. It says, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. And, you know, we're really approaching this time, man. You know, we're approaching a time of the very end. Because this gospel which the gospel is referring to the Bible as a whole in its entirety, you know, the Old Testament, the Apocrypha, and the New Testament. And it's being preached, meaning published, by the men of the Lord, the servants, the prophets of Yahweh, Bashmah, Shai, throughout the world. And that's happening through this tool that we all call the internet, you know, primarily through YouTube, and through the brothers, the, the, the various different Israelite brothers, righteous brothers that are, you know, going out there on the highways and byways, doing these street sermons, the street ministry, recording ourselves and uploading it on the internet. You know, us doing these various different lessons throughout the week. Once again, uploading it on the internet, on the YouTube. And that's how this word is being published. Okay. And that ties with Psalm 68, verse 11. The Lord, Yahweh, gave the word. And great was the company of them that published it, roughly paraphrasing. So this word is being preached throughout the world. In which when you go into this word, world here in the Greek, you'll find the Greek word oikimeni, which means the inhabitants of the earth. All right. And it's for a witness unto all nations. Why? Because you have our people that are scattered amongst all nations. The Israelites are scattered amongst all nations due to the curses. Deuteronomy 28 and verse 64. And upon Yahweh Shai's return, he's going to gather the elect of Israel out of all nations. Okay. And we're hoping to be of the elect. You know, during that time, the hour of destruction you know, when these nuclear missiles are, are launched, when Yahweh Shai appears with the holy angels in his wrath, you know, we that's of the hopeful members of the elect of Israel, we're hoping to be delivered in that time, you know, because we don't want to go through that second death pursuant to Revelation 21 verse 8. So it says, when this happens, you know, when this gospel is preached, then the end shall come. And the end, we, we should all know by now, the end is referring to the end of this current society, the end of this current uh, rulership, this current kingdom that's being ruled by the wicked, which is Esau, Edom, pursuing to Malachi 1 verse 4, Job 9 verse 24. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. So now we're living at the end of their rulership. Okay, pursuant to Second Ezra 6 verse 9, Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. So this is the time frame that we're living in. Now before I close out, let's go to Zechariah 14 verse 12 and break that down. In the King James Version, <clears throat> this is Zechariah 14 and verse 12. So it says, and this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord, whose name in the ancient Hebrew is Yahweh, and his son's name is Yahweh Shai, will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Now, Jerusalem is a people before it's a place, and the people is referring to our people, the Israelites, 
these so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. We make up Jerusalem, okay, as a nation. And the people that have fought against us are our enemies, which you can read about in the book of Psalms 83, beginning with Esau, Edom, right, our main oppressor that brought our people into captivity, primarily over here in North America, Babylon the Great. It says, their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet and their eyes shall consume away in their holes and their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. You know, this is something that's going to happen on a physical level and spiritually too. Okay, it's going to happen on a physical level because this is going to be the result of the ICBMs, okay, and the laser beams that's going to come from the chariots, the spiritual vehicles that our Lord's going to come back in, i.e. the UFOs, right, which is going to melt people to death. People's eyes are literally going to melt out of their sockets. Their skin is going to melt away, right? And on a spiritual level, this is also going into the plans and the goals of the wicked elite, okay? Because the wicked elite, according to Psalms 49 and verse 11, you know, a lot of these elite, they think that they're going to rule forever, okay? I'm talking about the Rothschilds, the Oppenheimers, the Rockefellers, the DuPonts. They believe that their houses are going to continue forever, for eternity, which is a vain thought. That's why it says in, what's that, uh, Psalms 2, why did a heathen imagine a vain thing? And their plans to, their, their, their plans as it pertains to their Novus Ordo Seclorum, which is Latin for New World Order, and them, you know, trying to enslave the masses of people, destroy the Israelites with the implantable microchip, that too is going to be consumed away within one hour, all right, pursuant to, again, Revelation, what's that, Revelation 18, it speaks about how Babylon the Great is going to be um, consumed, destroyed within one hour, so, like I said, it's going to be a very speedy riddance, and what we're, you know, reading here in this prophecy, well, this is where they got the concept of Terminator 2, all right, Terminator 2, and that scene where you have Sarah Connor at a playground and her flesh is being consumed by by the nukes, right? By that besom of destruction. And that's what's coming, man. <laughs> that's what's coming to the earth, man. And this is what we're prophesying about. The end of Esau's world and the beginning of our world. Again, pursuant to 2nd Ezra 6, verse 9. So anyway, Lord willing, you was edified and Lord willing, I'll catch you in the next one. Shalom.